everyone. Welcome to the online tutorial presented by You Are On Biology Nowadays. In this video, I will be giving you an introduction on biological classification, the need of classification and the history behind modern day classification systems. So, let's start. The living world and the living organisms in it are so diverse. Here you can find tiny microscopic one-celled organisms as well as huge many-celled organisms. To study about each organism in detail, it will be easy if they can be classified into similar groups. Many attempts were made in the past to classify living organisms. But a classification on a scientific basis was first done by Aristotle, a Greek philosopher known as father of biology. This was in around 300 BC. As there were no microscopes during those days, he grouped organisms on the basis of simple morphological features. He divided plants on the basis of size of stem into herbs that have soft stem, shrubs having many stems that are a little stronger than that of herbs and fine leaned trees that have a strong woody stem. Aristotle classified animals into a group with red blood and another group without red blood. There is an opinion that Aristotle divided animals on the basis of their habitat also. Habitat is the place where an organism lives. He divided animals into those which live in air, on land and in water. Even though it had many problems, this classification was used for nearly 2000 years because no much progress was made in biology in those years. During 16th to 17th century, microscope was invented and this was a big step in biology as it led to the discovery of cell and cell wall. Robert Hooke in 1665 discovered cell. In 1758, Carl Linnaeus introduced two kingdom classification of living organisms. This Swedish scientist is considered to be the father of modern taxonomy. He was such a great botanist that he was called the prince of botanists. On the basis of the presence or absence of cell wall, he divided living organisms into two kingdoms. Kingdom Plantae and Kingdom Animalia. Living organisms with a cell wall around their cell or cells were grouped into Plantae and living organisms having no cell wall around their cell or cells were grouped into Animalia. Very easy to understand and learn, right? But unfortunately, it also had some disadvantages. First point is that Prokaryotic organisms such as bacteria and cyanobacteria were grouped along with the eukaryotic organisms like plants. Eukaryotic cell, for example in the plant cell shown here, a true nucleus surrounded by a nuclear envelope or membrane is present. While in a prokaryotic cell, for example in the bacterial cell shown here, a true nucleus and the nuclear membrane are absent. Still, they were grouped together in kingdom plantae because cells of all these organisms have a cell wall. Also, unicellular organisms that are organisms having only one cell like Chlamydomonas and multicellular organisms that is organisms having many cells for example Spirogyra. Again, autotrophic organisms that is organisms that can prepare their own food for example green plants and heterotrophic organisms, that is organism that cannot prepare their own food, for example fungi, were grouped together in kingdom plantae. And can you guess what was the reason? Because the cells of these organisms had a cell wall. So now you must have understood that in addition to the presence and absence of cell wall, there are many other factors to look on while classifying living organisms. Moreover, the fungi cell wall had chitin while green plants which belong to the same group in Linnaeus classification had cellulose and hemicellulose in their cell walls. So, cell wall composition should also be considered. Another disadvantage of Linnaeus classification was that some protozoans like euglena that possess characters of both plants and animals, that is, euglena have chlorophyll in their chloroplast and in the presence of sunlight they can prepare their own food. But in the absence of light, they become heterotrophic by absorbing nutrients from the surroundings. They were not classified as a separate group in Linnaeus classification system. Let's
let's see a nice video from YouTube on the movement of Euglena. We can clearly see the flagellum which helps in its movement. Also note the green chloroplast in Euglena. So, to solve some of the problems in Linnaeus classification, Ernst Haeckel in 1866 proposed a third kingdom protista, which included any microorganism that was not a plant nor an animal. But the problems were not solved completely. Later in the middle of 20th century, electron microscopes were developed, which are capable of much higher magnifications than the light microscopes. This revealed the structure of each cell organelle in detail. So there was a need of newer classification system based on cell structure, that is whether prokaryotic or eukaryotic, cell wall composition, body or thallus organization, that is whether unicellular or multicellular, mode of nutrition, that is whether autotrophic or heterotrophic, and also based on phylogenetic relation, that is based on the evolutionary history of an organism. In 1969, Robert Harding Whittaker added two more kingdoms, Kingdom Monera and Kingdom Fungi. And he proposed a five kingdom classification considering all the criteria that we just saw. Kingdom Monera consisted of unicellular prokaryotes, Kingdom Protista consisted of unicellular eukaryotes, while Kingdom's Fungi, Plantae and Animalia consisted of multicellular eukaryotes. We'll be following Vitakat's five kingdom classification in this lecture. But before we go in detail on each kingdom, I would like to add an information here. In 1977, an American scientist, Carl Wooser, divided Kingdom Monera into two kingdoms, Archaebacteria and Eubacteria, and proposed a six kingdom classification system. Later, he proposed three domains of life, that is Eukarya, consisting of Kingdom Fungi, Plantae and Animalia, Domain Bacteria and Domain Archae, which is now called the Woosian Revolution. That's all for this lecture. In the part 2 of this lecture, we will see Kingdom Monera in detail. Thank you for being with me. Stay tuned with this channel for more videos.